CCI Illinois presents the Chicago Tribune High School Basketball Game of the Week. And from Hersey High School in Arlington Heights, a mid-suburban league North Divisional game is the Wheeling Wildcats take on the Hersey Huskies. And uh, Ken McCarthy, a big game tonight. Hersey can win the MSL North with a win. They really have, they have a chance to clinch it here tonight. I think tonight's the night for them. They really want to do it. Nick Django will start at one guard spot for Wheeling. Excellent outside shooter. Great outside shooter, a uh, consistent player, averaging double figures. One of the many players averaging double figures. They're going to need a big production out of him tonight. For Wheeling, number 54, Keith Lundstrom will start at one of the forward spots. A tough night for him. We'll have to go against Dan Larson. He's got, he's got to shut down Larson. That's a lot to ask a, a player like Lundstrom. But uh, he's done it before. He can really challenge him very well, I think. For Hersey, 7-1 and one in the MSL North. Carl Storrs at a guard can light it up. Over almost about 40 percent from beyond three-point range, he really opens up a lot of things inside for Larson. And you mentioned number 54, Dan Larson will start in the middle, one of the premier players at his position in the league. One of the outstanding players in the area, and uh, I think the fans are going to get a treat watching him tonight. An important game from Hersey High School in Arlington Heights. We'll have the tip in one minute. Stay with us. at Hersey High School in Arlington Heights. The starting lineups for both teams being introduced here tonight. The Wheeling Wildcats, the visitors in the blue jerseys, the Hersey Huskies at home tonight with the white jerseys, the brown and orange trim. And Ken, we have a little more time now, I believe, than we did standing on the floor. But Hersey had a chance to win the MSL North title outright against Palatine the other night. They lost 41-40 in a shot. Not a last second shot, but a three point shot with 12 seconds left to beat them. So uh, they have to be prepared to play tonight. Well, I, I think they are. We, uh, we both talked to Coach uh, Rowley before the game. And this team, you know, I asked him, I said, what do you do to prepare a team going into the playoffs? And he said, we're still taking it a game at a time. Uh, they're, they're taking Wheeling very ser seriously tonight. They know that they can win. They can clinch it tonight. I think it's a big game for them. This game was originally supposed to be played on the 11th of February, but it was moved to today, which is the 18th, because of a believe a wrestling sectional meet which they had in this gymnasium and both coaches uh, very adamant about the fact that they would have preferred playing this game last week both teams were ready to play them both teams were prepared for the other opponent then so uh, we'll see what happens tonight I would think it might be an edge for the Wheeling Wildcats uh, even though nowhere for them to go as far as any tournaments go but uh, I think more time to prepare against Hershey well I think uh, when you're coming in here Wheeling you uh, David and Goliath to a certain extent and uh, Wheeling's a good quality team and they played uh, they played well, they played up and down the season it is going to be a tough contest coming in here to Hershey and winning on the road uh, but I, I think that Wheeling will be prepared for it and uh, look to see a very aggressive, hard fought game out here tonight Hershey beat Wheeling on January 10th not too long ago, 71-63 an 8 point game, however it was only a 4 point game with about a minute and a half to go so the Wildcats I'm sure Pat Doyle stressed to them before the game that, hey, you can play with these guys. Don't be intimidated by them. And uh, especially if Lundstrom stays out of foul trouble, I think we should see a good game. Yeah, exactly. Uh, Lundstrom was the one who got in foul trouble. He was on Larson, and he had to sit out midway through the third quarter. And at that point, uh, Hershey was able to get on top of the game and, and not look back. But uh, that should be a great contest uh, between Lundstrom. And the Wildcats win the tip. That's Litka, and Litka had it stolen. Huskies swing it down court. Matthews for two. Both these teams like to run. We we'll talk about how important rebounding is for each of the team. That's something to keep in mind here tonight. But both teams like to push the ball up the court. That was Boris, the guard for Wheeling. Now they swing it up top. Off to the right, Litka. Litka, his shot in and out wouldn't go. The rebound to Django. His shot, that wouldn't go. Lundstrom's follow, that wouldn't go. And it went out of bounds to who? To Hersey. Three shots at it. They... Did a good job crashing the offensive board, something that Pat Doyle was disappointed with last time as they showed uh, good fortitude there. This Wheeling team is not nearly as big as this uh, Hersey team, and that was a good uh, demonstration of what effort can do for you on the offensive boards. Wheeling did a good job there. They just weren't able to put it home. Mike Brown, the playmaker for Hersey. They get it across into their front court. They played from Matthews. Now Ron Dio off to the left. That's Brown. Larson, baseline shot, wouldn't drop, and an over-the-back foul on Eric Ronzio. Ronzio, the senior, with his first, and that's the first team foul on Hersey. I believe it was Eric Kane underneath there for uh, Wheeling that had position and actually jumped back a little bit into Ronzio, but uh, 
Good effort nonetheless from the boards. Boards are going to be very important here tonight. Steal by Hersey. That was Matthews to steal ahead to Stores. That was blocked. Out of bounds. Hersey screaming for a foul. And the referees say no. We'll give you the officials in just a moment. But uh, it is Hersey ball. Brown to inbounds. The lob to Larson. Working on Lundstrom. The shot would not drop. Lundstrom has defended him well so far as Larson's missed his first two shots. Payne. Lundstrom. Traveling violation on Lundstrom. The call made by Dave Koska. The official, Dave Koska from Rolling Meadows, the official that made the call. The other referee tonight is Phil Schmidt. He is from Wilmette. Here's a steal. Litka. Off the glass, that wouldn't drop. The Wildcats are cold from the floor here in the first quarter. Brown. Well, you can see right away, Bert, the pace of the game is going to be fast. Uh, hustle all the way through. A block and a foul will be called on Jason Matthews, his first. The Wildcats with the right idea to push the ball up the floor in a hurry and a foul call. You're not going to see a lot of half-court offenses here tonight. Both these teams, again, just like to get the ball and, ru and run with it. Wheeling, uh, Coach Pat Doyle told us, uh, you know, initially that uh, this team is, he wants this team to be aggressive offensively. It's not a term that a lot of coaches use, but uh, I think it describes the way he wants to play this game. He wants to push the ball up and take advantage of any opportunities that avail themselves. Mike Payne, the senior, Six feet, 155, missed the first of two and got the roll that time. So that puts the Wildcats on the board, two to one, and we played about a minute and a half of the game. Wheeling in a one, two, two press after the field goal, after the free throw, rather. That's Matthews, who finally got it across. Three-point attempt on the way by Stores, who can nail him, and that one was missed. I'll get another try for it. Larson, that was tipped out. That should be Hersey ball. Both teams really going at each other here in the early going. Pretty physical game. Wheeling not really known for being that physical a team, but they're physical so far. For as wide open as this game is, it's surprising that there's the score is so low. That's Matthews. Brown, he sets a pick for him, and now Brown picked up by Boris. They swing it to Stores. Ronzi up from the free line. They let him shoot it. He hit it. Ron has been open a couple times there from the top of the key or, or right there at the free throw line. He's going to have to make that shot. As soon as he does, Wheeling's going to have to come out and challenge him. This is Payne, who can shoot from the outside. Now Lundstrom, long range shot. Just caught a piece of the net and the crowd lets him have it. Reach in foul, that'll go on Larson. Well, if they can get Larson into foul trouble. Larson got off to a slow start the last time these two teams played. He had a hot second half, but if they can put him in foul trouble, that can take him out of his game and he picks up his first personal. It'd be a switch of what happened in the last game where Lundstrom got in foul trouble. Ooh, great lob, the shot wouldn't drop. Got a push from behind uh, here on Hersey. I believe Mike Brown will get it. Third team foul for the Wildcats are ice cold from the floor. They haven't made a field goal yet. Yeah, but you know, I, I think they've got to be feeling good about the opportunities that they're creating. They're getting down the court and they're doing a good job rebounding. So uh, they should be feeling confident that the shots will eventually go down. Litka was fouled and will that go on Larson? I believe it will. He got an arm on him. Let's see if uh, Don Raleigh goes to his bench here to get Larson out of the game. Yes, he will. Well, two fouls in the first two and a half minutes of the game. I think you've got to take him out, and uh, he will sub for him. Cyrus Turner will come in. Larson will go out. That is a, a definite advantage for Wheeling. And Joe Litka, the senior forward, with two shots here, 65% free throw shooter. Wildcats as a team shooting 68% from the line. Not bad. You want to, high school level, want to have it at least about 70. Goes one out of two. Again, the press after the mate. Free throw. Brown to Turner. Turner just checked in, gets the hoop. 
Good ball movement there by Hurst. He broke the press it's very effectively. Jeff Boris off to the right, played at that time to count. Now the follow by Boris is good. Jeff Boris, who can rebound for a guard, gets the first field goal for the Wildcats. It's a two-point game. Lundstrom providing a couple of key screens there on that offensive set. That's Brown. Go Tipped back. and stolen. Litka with the tip. Boris to the hoop. Traveling yeah. violation on Jeff Boris. Well, Boris knew he was getting into the tall timber there, and he wanted to get a running start at it. To see the longer runway might help him get up a little bit higher. See the replay of it there. They finally get it in the front court. Good dish that time. That was blocked by Litka, taken the other way by the Wildcats. That's Jengo. And Jengo ties the game. End to end action here, and we get a foul on the shot. Well, it's kind of running. It's, uh, it's amazing. I haven't seen a game here on our CCI Network this season that's been uh, this uh, fast-paced. It's been outstanding. Speaking of the games of the CCI Network, it's nice to have you back in the saddle again, Bert. I am glad to be here. I think, you know, uh, it's tough for me working downtown during the week to get out for a lot of these games. I'd love to do all of them, but uh, working at... Uh, Connor Sports, as I do downtown, it's tough to get out for these. And 8-6 uh, game now as two shots by Jason Matthews went through. So you have to pay for that plug. 8-6, <laughs> Hersey, make it 8-8. Eight, eight. That was Litka. So they've got three of their starters going now, and we're halfway through the first quarter. Reach in foul, and that'll go on Boris. That was a good reach in. It almost looked clean. It was close enough to call a foul, though, and Boris is going to be nailed with one. But uh, that's the key about this Wheeling team is that their scoring is very evenly distributed. Huskies get it into Brown, picked up by Boris. That's Matthews, worked off a screen that time by Turner. Now Brown, his shot, missed it, tipped out. The Huskies should get another crack at it, and they do. And a reach in foul, that'll go on Mike Payne, that'll be his second. And now a coaching decision by Pat Doyle, Mike Payne. Mike Payne's been very active so far. He's uh, on both ends of the floor. He's been uh, uh, going to the boards very hard. It's his second, but he'll be, he'll be in. Pat Doyle not moving right now. Turner. Brown passed the shot at Ron's heel. Turnaround shot. Missed it. Loose ball to the floor, and Boris came away with it for the Wildcats. Very good ball handler. you got—you got to love the uh, the activity on the part of Wheeling right now. They're playing with a lot of intensity. That was That's blocked. Blocked. blocked by Matthews. And Brown in a hurry for Ronzio. Matthews for great. two. It's good. Great passing. It's great passing, getting the ball up court. The ball hardly touched the ground. Great pass by Ronzio, cross court to find an open man. Played five minutes of the first quarter, 10 to eight, in favor of Hersey here at home. Litka off a nice feed. That was a beautiful feed. Litka with four, we're tied at 10. Brown, that's Jake Olson. Olson, the sophomore from about 17, missed the shot. And Lundstrom the board. Willing really doing a good job of man-to-man -man defense in the half court. Wildcats have never led. A hoop here will give them the lead. Payne had to kick it out. Now Matthews. And had it slapped away by Boris. Now a three-on-one break the other way. Nice no-look pass to Litka. Beautiful pass by Django. Three-on-one took care of the, that opportunity. But a good job hustling back on defense to pick the ball up after it was poked away. Litka with six first quarter points. We're down to two minutes for the quarter. Ronzio shot no good. Olsen the rebound. That'll be wheeling ball, I believe. No, that was tipped out. Yes, it will be wheeling ball. Mike Payne will sit down. 
Well, I correct myself again. That's Hersey's. So Brown will inbound. Two minutes for the first 12 10. Wheeling. Fourth Baskerville in for uh, Wheeling. Five second violation. Really playing with a lot of intensity here on defense. And looking very good and not at all uh, intimidated by Hersey or their crowd here at this point. That's Boris guarded by Brown. Worked it to Jengo. Baskerville, now Litka. Lundstrom guarded by Turner. Lundstrom from 12, banks it too hard. Ronzio the rebound. Down to a minute 30 for the first quarter. Olson. Now Matthews. And that went right through the hands of Ronzio. They had the right idea for that uh, sequence there. You know, Don Rowley said, uh, I, I said, how's your team playing? Wh where are they at? And uh, He felt pretty confident about where his team is at right now, and uh, they are where they should be. He said that if there's something for them to work on, it's their turnovers at this point, that and their decision-making. But turnovers are costly, and when you get into the tournament time, you can't afford uh, as many turnovers as Hersey's uh, had here in his first half. Litka will sit down. He's got six points in the game. He sits down. Mark Schuler comes in. Beautiful. And right off the bat, Schuler who just checked in with two points. Dribble penetration by Boris. Biggest lead of the night, and that'll go as a reach in foul on Baskerville. Torres Baskerville with his first, team's fourth. What a wonderful name. <laughs> Now he played football and uh, several football players yes. on the floor here tonight. Olsen, Brown for Ranzio, baseline left, had to fake the shot, hit the back of the rim. The follow is put up no good, traveling violation on Cyrus Turner and with 50 seconds left, the Wildcats up by four, a chance to add to their lead. Of course, Lundstrom was the quarterback, I believe, for a wheelie. Whistle push. Offensive. As it is on Baskerville, that's he not a good foul to take. Well, he was trying to set a screen for uh, Jenga, but uh, got caught in the act. And that uh, really a big foul, because had they wound the clock down, potentially they could have had a six-point lead. Now an alley-oop pass down court. The shot is up. It is good by Bo Vassal, and a foul on Baskerville. That's three straight fouls in a minute on Torres Baskerville. Well, I am really surprised that, that he was able to complete that pass because uh, <laughs> that was an amazing pass. I didn't think it was going to be completed. So Bo Vasso with a chance to complete a three-point play. Those are the fastest three fouls we've ever seen a player get on TCI, Ken. Vasso really only had a half a step, but... Uh, that was a nice touch pass, actually. It was kind of like, uh, like Jim Kelly or someone. Fossil connects. One point game, 14-13 wheeling. That foul in the Wildcat front court, uh, you look back a little later on in the game, could be the turning point of the game. Percy trying to trap here and get a turnover. But I think it's important for wheeling and their confidence to score here. Down to 20 seconds for the first quarter. Boris, now Litka will come out high. To play for a shot. Larson's been out ever since he got his uh, second foul, so he's got a lot of rest. The way the game has been played, he'll need it. Payne, who can shoot from outside, cross court that time. To Jengo, the shot wouldn't drop, out of bounds with two seconds left to Hersey. Well, you can get off a shot with two seconds. Ronzio to inbound to Brown at the buzzer. We played a quarter on our Chicago Tribune game of the week. The Wildcats lead the Huskies 14 to 13. We'll be back. Catch all the excitement Saturday, February 29th. Ken McCarthy at 
Hersey High School about the fastest paced game we've seen in a long time. It's, uh, you know, both, both teams are really running the ball. And again, I, I think with Larson spending so much time on the bench and uh, he's still on there as we start the second quarter, he's getting a tremendous amount of rest. Come the fourth quarter, even though these kids are, you know, 17, 18 years old and in the prime uh, physical part of their life, they're still going to get a little bit tired to come, come time for the fourth quarter. Now, Don Rowley, I think, looking at it as he's got to space those fouls out. That shot was blocked. Boris the other way. Well, I can get to my point in a second here as Boris gets it in the front court for Wheeling. I was going to say he's got to space Larson's fouls out and figuring that if it's a close game and Larson's in there, that's to their advantage. I think you're right. I think uh, he knows that this game's going to be played physical in a physical manner. Bustle with five in the game and Hersey back on top by a point, 15 to 14. Reach in foul. Boy, most players will get called for a foul that time. Now the lob underneath to Lundstrom. Banked it off the glass. Too soft. Out of bounds. That'll go to Wheeling. Well, I, I think perhaps Wheeling feels that with uh, Larson out, they can go inside, but uh, Razio is a, a, a great defender. Django to inbound. Django for three. No, the tip off the rebound was tipped to Vassal. That was a good play by Boris to tip it, but Hersey with the ball. Ronzio. They swing it to Storrs. Storrs had it blocked, saved inbounds, and Boris for the Wildcats will bring it across midcourt. Hersey not getting a lot of second chance opportunities on their offensive boards right now. Hersey playing a very good defensive set in their, their half court. Trying to post Lundstrom, they can't get the ball to him. Now Django shot, wouldn't drop. Foul call, that'll go on Django. Boy, Vossel's been everywhere since he's come off the bench. Scored on the breakaway, hit a free throw, hit another basket, got a steal, got a rebound. Vossel back to the free throw line. Well, with five in the game. And he'll get two shots there. Hersey three for three from the free throw line tonight. Hersey with that good strong rebounding on their, their offense, their defensive boards, they're getting a lot of fast break opportunities. And they're, that's not by accident. Four for four. Bossel's hit his two free throws. This will equal their biggest lead if he hits it. He does, three-point game, 17-14, Hersey. Hersey pressing a little bit here. That's Payne, they break it, and the bad pass, that was forced, pardon me, by the press. Wasn't real heavy press, though. Ronzio banked it too hard, hit by Turner, Litka has it. Boris picked up by Counts, now a steal by Turner the other way. Good ball movement that time, and the layup by, Stor uh, that, by Storrs. That's a team that knows how to fast break. Great passing there, and Wheeling just making some bad decisions with the ball, tentative to shoot, tentative to pass. That's all I want the timeout. Good timeout. We played 218 of the second quarter, 19 to 14 in favor of Hersey. A couple of turnovers, a couple of ill-advised passes, and uh, Wheeling dropped down, dropping down now five points below Hersey. Can't get too far away from this Hersey team. It's got too many weapons. It's got a pretty deep bench, and they play such strong defense that uh, they're going to it's going to be difficult to get back in the game against them. So, if you're Wheeling. You got to stay up on top of the whole game and hope that uh, you're there when the fourth quarter comes around. And I'm sure at halftime we'll get a look. We'll get a look at their shooting percentage. You can, you can see in the sophomore game, Hersey defeated Wheeling 53 to 31. We had a chance to catch the tail end of that game. You know, uh, talk about shooting percentage, Hersey is holding their opposition under 40% shooting, which is pretty good. They're holding them down to about 39.7. And um, in, in talking with Coach Don Rowley, he said a lot of times there's this myth about good defensive teams that they automatically have hold their opponents to low scoring. 
And it's not really scoring, it's the, it's the percentage. The reason why a lot of teams score a fair amount of points against Hersey is because Hersey runs the ball so much and they're on offense, turning the, they're scoring points quickly and that gives the ball, puts the ball back into the opposition's hands. But uh, nonetheless, a very, very solid defensive team. Well, I would bet Wheeling shooting percentage in the first half is well below 40. They've rebounded pretty well on the offensive glass, but they have not converted many shots here. That's Payne, now Lundstrom. Larson back in the game for Hersey. Jingo, ooh, a good shot, he had to hang, and while moving to his left, he had to shoot it to his right. That was a tough shot. Jingo with four in the game. Jingo, very good defender, too. Oh! Traveling. I think he wanted to line that up and uh, sometimes lose your concentration. 19-16, Hersey. Pressure half court. Good kick out pass to Django for three. That wouldn't drop. Now a lob. Ooh. That went out. A good attempt to save it by Bo Vossel. Well, I think they just threw Bo Vossel out here just to throw his body around because he's been... He's been uh, He's been from one end of the court to the other, and he just ran into the wall there. And the worst of it was, uh, I think, his elbow. But uh, he's the guy in the fast break a lot of these times. He'll release early. Boris picked up by Matthews. Matthews doing a good job of shielding him, trying to prevent him from starting that offense and pushing that offensive initiation out as far as he can. Boris on the drive, had to dish it off. Larson at position. Now Litka with a turnaround shot. Wouldn't drop. Larson the rebound. Again, the intimidation factor of Dan Larson. Wheeling had to play against Roy Johnson at Maine South, a player that alters a lot of shots. And Larson hit that one. Well, they're trying to front Larson with Lundstrom, get him some help from behind, but that was just a great entry pass. Larson took one step towards the basket, basket and dropped it in. Eric Ronzio coming back in the game. Cyrus Turner goes to the bench then. Litka with the foul, and Larson will be attempting a three-point play here. Larson with his first two points in the game. Percy six out of six from the free throw line tonight. 22-16, their biggest lead. This is Payne for Wheeling. Tried to trap him. And Larson a steal. And now the Hersey defense is starting to swarm in the half court. Wheeling not getting, now they're not even getting good opportunities to put the ball up. That's Bossel. Reach in foul. Payne will get it. His second or third. That's his third. The way the game started out, it was Hersey that picked up Hersey picked up the first three fouls of the game, and now Wheeling with one, two, three, four. Nine team fouls. Hersey with five, so Vassal with one and one here. Still a six-point game, about 3.40 to go here in the second quarter. Payne. Litka. It's Beautiful good. Shot. And then we got a foul underneath against Wheeling. It might be on Lundstrom. Beautiful three-point shot there, though, by Litka. It was on Lundstrom. He had a push underneath. Might get a look at it here again. Lundstrom not having the faith in Lit being able to drop it underneath. There's a push. And that looks like normal pushing, actually, underneath there. But uh, foul was called nonetheless on him. And uh, it's his first. Put Ronzi on the line. Ronzio, 55% free throw shooter, hit that one. Jason Matthews back in, and Bob also getting uh, an ovation there, uh, pretty uh, enthusiastic ovation there by uh, Coach Raleigh as he comes to the bench. A lot of hustle there by Bob Bo Vossel. Ronzio with two free throws. And that'll be Hersey Ball. And uh, that confidence level that we talked about that was so apparent for Wheeling early in the first quarter, it just evaporated into nothing. And they, 
They're having trouble, just having trouble getting the ball in bounds at this point. That's Olsen. Matthews, foul line right to Brown. Ronzio was open. Hasn't shot too well from the floor tonight. Larson, kick out pass to Olsen for three. Bank it in. He's smiling. You don't know if he meant to bank that in or not. He's still smiling. Django, good move. Reach in foul that'll go on Ronzio. That's his second. And the Huskies are over. That'll put Django, I believe. Oh, correct uh, correction. That was their sixth foul, so they will just inbound. Django, the lob for Litka. Fakes, gets the shot up off the glass and oh, in. That was extremely tough. Larson was right there in his face the whole time. Ball was thrown out. There's some decision as to who went off of the Wheeling team. Adamant about the fact that the ball went off of a Hersey player. Nonetheless, the ball's being inbounded by Ronzio. Down court to Matthews. The pass that was put in that time, I believe, by Brown. Coach Doyle recognized the fact immediately that they weren't going to get the ball, and he was trying to get players back to prevent against a fast break, and they didn't get back there in time. 29-20, Jingo's shot wouldn't drop. Larson the rebound for Matthews. Willing does a good job this time of getting back on defense, but too often Hersey's had fast break opportunities. Larson, yes. Well, they're trying to front him with Lundstrom. They come behind him with Litka, but it's not working. Pat Doyle furious. Furious at Phil Schmidt, the referee from Wilmette here. He was adamant about the fact that that should have been wheeling ball. And I think he, he, he called time to settle his team, but I think he wanted to let the referee have a piece of his mind more than anything. Yeah, well, I I, I don't know. I, I didn't see the inbounds pass, so I can't comment on it myself, but uh, Pat Doyle, a very calm and collected guy usually, got uh, very upset there. I want to thank both Pat Doyle and Don Rowley for taking the opportunity to talk to us before the games and uh, always appreciate their uh, their input. Well, Don Rowley said uh, tonight if they win, they will be cutting the net down. Hersey, if they win tonight, will be the North Division champions. So plenty of, plenty of motivation for them tonight. There's Don Raleigh in the middle in the brown sport coat. Percy, you know, I asked Don about where, where's your team at and, and are they ready for the playoffs? And like I mentioned before, he's really concerned about just playing one game at a time and they'll practice for, uh, I believe it's Frem they play next. Uh, I'm not sure who the next game is, but uh, it's important that the team stay level-headed as they had in attorney time. But you got to think that this team is in a really good position as it gets into the playoffs, playing great defense. Offensively, they've got a, a good score in Dan Larson and... Uh, some outside shooting. A lot of things are right where Don Riley wants them to be, I would think, right now. In the Lundstrom, that was in traffic. Now a breakaway for Matthews, laid it in. So many fast break opportunities. Percy is getting. As soon as that defense starts to collapse in the ball and the ball's poked away at all, you'll see a man release almost immediately. Eight points for Matthews. The Huskies have really spread the scoring around in the first half. Litka. Too hard. Brown the board. And a foul on Boris, a minute 37 to go. This one is slipping away from Wheeling in a hurry. Uh, and, and Boris is out of frustration there coming from behind. He wanted to come from behind and poke the ball away, but uh, just got tangled up. Coach Doyle spent a lot of time talking to him. Jeff Boris, that is. Well, Mike Brown, the best free throw shooter on their team, will get one and one here. Nine out of ten from the line for Hersey. Those are playoff kind of numbers. Yes, they are. 34-20. One out of two. Well, Willie's got to shut down Hersey here for the, the rest of the half, and they can't afford any more turnovers, that's for sure. 
Lundstrom off the glass. No, the follow was no good. Scoop shot, and Django did a nice job of drawing a foul. That'll go on Ronzio, and that should be his third. Again, Larson not on the court. Cyrus Turner coming in now for Ron's heels. He'll sit down. He mentioned his third. A Django with four in the game will get two shots. Pace has definitely slowed down some. No, it has. That's to the advantage of Hersey. Kind of get the sense that if Hersey wants to run, they'll, they'll make the game a running game. If they want to slow it down, they can slow it down. And the Wildcats with the rebound, 34-21 they trail. Payne, nice move to the baseline, laid it in. Beautiful shot in the foul. Fouls on Matthews. That's his second. So Payne with a chance to convert a three-point play here. Three out of six, Wheeling is. Four out of seven. Well, Come if they on. can hold uh, hold uh, Hersey here, we think he has to come back and cut the lead down to under 10, which would be a significant achievement here towards the end of the second second quarter. Under a minute for the half, a 10-point Hersey lead. I'll probably wind it here. Matthews. Olsen, down to 40 seconds. They tried to shoot it in that time. Lundstrom the rebound. 30 seconds for the half. A big trip for Wheeling here. Off to the left, Payne. Oh, he oh. tried to lob it in for Litka, who... Well advised, and once again, Matthews was way down court. Again, these guys release immediately. As soon as something looks like... Uh, any chance that, that there's going to be a turnover, one of their men's going to release. Ten seconds. That shot missed. We're down to four seconds. Out of bounds. That'll be wheeling ball. Four seconds. You can get off the shot here. Yeah, you Th can, but, but wheeling's got to be careful not to turn the ball over and give Hersey an easy basket here. That would be a killer right now. You want to get a, an opportunity at a, at a pretty, pretty decent shot. Long pass down court. Tipped out, they wheeling it's ball. It's wheeling ball, and all he did was move the inbounds from, uh, from one side to the other. Well, it could have, may have been two tenths of a second, four well, tenths of a second. Don Riley came right over to the timekeeper and said, "What? No time." Lundstrom, Django for three, no good. At the buzzer and through two quarters of play at Hersey. The Huskies lead the Wildcats 34 to 24. We'll be back. Plus, parent segment of our broadcast. I always love saying that real fast. Yeah, and we, times. and 10 times, that's right. And we have Michael and Karen Ronzio as our guests tonight. They're the parents of Eric Ronzio, who is number 44 for the Hersey Huskies. And I was talking a moment ago, but uh, did you expect to see as fast a pace game tonight as what we have? Yeah, we played uh, Wheeling, uh, you know, in the first half, uh, first half of this uh, conference, and it was the same type of game. They, Wheeling's a very good team, you know, and uh, I'm glad we, we can keep up with them. Uh, Eric, uh, I, I know from the floor, I don't know what the numbers are. He missed a couple of shots from the floor, but uh, I, I think he's he should have a better second half, right? I, I hope so. Hopefully he'll get the ball again in the second half. Uh, in the first half of the conference, he didn't shoot that much from the outside, so uh, it's nice for a dad to see him shooting uh, from the floor. All right, Karen, he, he's a senior at this stage. Does he know where he's going to go to school? He wants to go to Carnegie Mellon. It's in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. And his second choice is Washington University in St. Louis. So that means that's, that's lots of gas money to get out there, you know, to head out that way. He'd like to uh, see a little bit of the United States. All right, uh, well, it, it's, it's nice out there. And uh, uh, this, maybe he could uh, charter a plane or something yeah. to make the trip shorter for the both of you. Uh, let's talk about, uh, you mentioned that uh, his association with uh, 
Dan Larson, he and Dan go back to fourth grade. Right. Uh, Eric's first introduction into basketball was the HYBA in fourth grade. And him and Danny were uh, teamed up on the same team together. And they went 14-0 and in the regular season, uh, you know, their team in HYBA. So they've had a nice uh, career together. So they, uh, they keep track of career rebounds since fourth grade, too? Or? Uh, no, they don't. Uh, Danny's ahead in the points, and uh, him and Eric are pretty even in the rebounds. All right, and, and real quick, uh, second half, if if Percy wins tonight, they win the MSL North title outright. outright. What's, what's it been like? Uh, Eric's had to have talked about that. Um, they're very excited. This is their senior year. Uh, they've been, again, playing together since, you know, third and fourth grade, most of them, and uh, Hersey feeder team and so forth. So it's it's a very uh, good, close-knit group, and they're, they're looking forward. They were looking forward to this year, and it's coming out the way they've hoped it to be. So going downstate since sixth grade. Those are good plans. Yeah. Yeah, okay, well, we, th we thank you both, Michael and Karen Ronzio, for being our guests our Chicago Tribune Preps Plus Parents segment of our broadcast tonight. 34-24 is the score. Hersey leading Wheeling, and we'll be back. I think one of the greatest benefits of cable television is the wide variety of programs. back at Hersey High School. The life of high school sports announcers, Ken, it's, uh, <laughs> does, does time ever flown by faster? Uh, not any time I can remember ever spending with you, Bert. <laughs> well, it's 34-24 at halftime. Hersey leading Wheeling, and what's on the line tonight, uh, Wheeling more or less, uh, I would say playing for revenge. They lost to early earlier this year to Hersey. 71-63 tonight. If Hersey should hang on and win, and they've, they've given every indication uh, that, that they will, but they will be the MSO North champs. Wheeling trying to prevent that from happening tonight. Wheeling fully, uh, fully aware of it. Uh, Coach Pat Doyle fully aware of what tonight means. and You know, they wanted to come out here and, and, and knock off Hersey. And uh, I'll tell you something. It's been a... It's sort of like the the season it's been up and down as we get a look at some of the statistics and there you see 25 percent from wheeling and that's the story right there uh even in turnovers a lot of turnovers for both teams but 46 percent to 25 percent they're lucky they're not down by 25 or more wildcats down by 10 litka from the baseline the shot wouldn't drop fight for the loose ball and a foul will go on ronzio look out that's his fourth now that's you know, Ronzio's kind of a uh, quiet guy out there, but he does a lot of work on the boards. It is his fourth. He does a lot of work on the boards, sets a lot of screens, and physical presence out there for Hersey, an important part of how they, they operate. They're going into a zone now to prevent some of those, to help uh, help them in their, their foul trouble. Lundstrom, and gets kicked back out to Payne. Well, Payne, Payne didn't want anything to do with that inside area there. They traveling on Jingo. Boy, that, that's really caused by Larson and his presence out there. You know, a player like that, a player with uh, with his intimidation factor forces players to change their shots or change where they shoot from the floor. And that's just another dimension of his game. Brown guarded by Jingo. Well, Larson's had a quiet game because he has been in foul. He got in foul trouble early, so he's been pretty quiet. Larson, oh, he had to squeeze through two players there. Loose ball to the floor. Litka saved it to Lundstrom, and he gives it to the guard, Boris. Boy, talk about collapsing on a guy. They put three or four guys on top of him as soon as he got the ball. Really needs a hoop here. Been sitting on 24 for a while. Now they're at 26. Lundstrom, a good move to the hoop. And that's his first field goal of the game.
eight point Hersey lead. Hersey's played some close games this year, but more importantly for Hersey, they've played a lot of tough teams. That's gonna really help them when it comes down to the stretch. Nice steal, nice anticipation there. Django to the hoop, blocked and a foul Both called ending. on Turner. Foul. Crowd didn't like it. And a timeout is gonna be called here by Hersey. Well, great anticipation there by Jenga. Just outstanding athletic play, anticipating the pass and jumping into the passing lane. Good timeout taken they, uh, by Don Rowley. They, they say their their coaches now are asking the ref was that goaltending. I thought it was. I thought it was hit off. The, it looked like to me like it was hit off the board. I I can't really tell, but uh, nonetheless, Wheeling will go to the line with a chance to. Cut it to six then. Well, Nick Django will get two shots here. Ball went on Cyrus Turner. It was hard to tell from our angle whether that was a clean block or not, but the referee said it was not. And Django hits the first of two. Django 71% from the line. Six points in the game. He's their leading scorer, of course, and averaging just under 15. Here comes the press again, trying to deny the entry pass. And it won't be a turnover. It will not. Went off a Hersey player last. Well, they say it went off a Wildcats, so I'm Hersey sorry, will inbound. Uh, you're right. A, wi a, a Wildcat player was the last one to touch it. That's why Hersey has the ball. <laughs> I understand these basic rules. That's Brown. Foul line left Matthews. And a push called on Lundstrom. Larson was on, trying to get position. Lundstrom with his second foul. Good job by Lundstrom. Larson. Good recovery. Shot will count and a foul. Litka will get the foul. Boy, it's got to be frustrating for Wheeling because the Lundstrom made such a great defensive play there in fronting Larson. Ball just parked, popped back out to a Hersey player, got it right back into Larson. And he he goes to the hoop very nicely from that low post, doesn't he? He's got a nice pivot move there. Well, he does, and once, once you get him the ball down low, it's almost impossible to stop him. They might get four points out of this. Matthews. Into Larson down low. Hit that one. Lar Larson will with, using a couple of his players to get screens in the low post, one from one side to the other, waiting for an opportunity to get open. Once he's open and he gets the ball, you're right, Bert, he has a lot of determination. Litka had it. Blocked, and that'll go on Turner, his second. Not a bad move, though, with uh, as many players as Hersey has in foul trouble. Now, Litka, Joe Litka, 65% free throw shooter, a senior, will go to the line here for two shots. The Wildcats, six of nine from the free throw line tonight. Senior oriented. Team. Well, actually, seven seniors, seven juniors, but uh, of the players that they play, the seniors get the majority of the playing time. Thirty-eight, twenty-eight in favor of Hersey here. A lot of times when teams come back out from the third to the beginning of the third quarter, the game changes one direction or another. Either the team starts coming back or a team that's on side top starts to blow it out a little bit. And this game really hasn't moved in either direction yet. Ten point lead at halftime, that's where we are now. Actually, it's a eight point, uh, nine point lead. Vassal, Brown for three. Uh-uh. Nobody hitting the threes tonight. Nobody. We've got one three point shot in the game and that was Jake Olson, the sophomore for Hersey that hit one midway in the second quarter. 38-29, the Wildcats won't go away here, down nine. Played about three minutes of the third quarter. Django, pull-up shot. 
I think that was partially blocked, and now Larson Long, outlet pass to Matthews, had it go off his leg, and who will slow it up? There's that quick release again. Got a couple guys down low, open up. Storr's gonna handle the pass inside, but uh, again, Percy releasing a man as soon as they have any anticipation that they're gonna get the ball, they're releasing it's usually Matthews, but uh, Vossel's gone a couple times himself. Boris, Payne, on the drive, baseline, Jengo for two. Nick Jengo. Again, Wheeling playing very aggressively in offense, going right to the boards, not being real intimidated. Good screen there by Vossel. Stores, no, the rebound to Boris. Nice no-look pass to Lundstrom, had it tipped away by Stores. Great play by Stores. Lundstrom just wasn't at the same speed as Boris, and the fast break just didn't develop like it should have. Double dribble. 10 second violation. Yep. There's a pressure at the 10 second line that uh, Wheeling's been putting on tonight. It's been kind of subtle, but caused a turnover there. Have our Tribune player of the game announcement coming up in the fourth quarter. Up. That went off Lundstrom's head. Boris had to get rid of it, otherwise he would have been called for double dribble. Now reach and foul go on Jason Matthews. He wanted a jump ball. Well, Wheeling at times looking very disorganized on offense, uh, not knowing who to go to and uh, people not being prepared to catch passes and uh, not really concentrating. Jeff Boris is their quarterback is trying to just get them all on the same page. Well, he only has two points tonight. Lundstrom. That is a great low post move. Lundstrom just backed his way in against Larson, which is no easy task. It went up strong, and Larson looks a little bit frustrated by that. Lundstrom with four. I was going to say Boris, I think, has been the best player on the floor tonight so far. Certainly one of the most active. Is, well, there's a hold right there yeah, on, the, Brown. on Larson or uh, Stores, and uh, got away with that one. 40 to 33, Hersey. Three minutes for the third. Lundstrom, Boris. Got a push. No, yes, it is a push off on Litka. The women contingent is behind us here, and they're not very happy with the officiating at this point. Uh, Vassal finally got it in. That's Olsen. Foul line right, Brown. The sophomore Olsen. Matthews guarded by Django on the drive. Off to the right, Brown. 250 for the third. They tried to lob it into Larson. Tip, Django controls for Wheeling. The defense again. They've had some success with Lundstrom fronting Larson. Django for three. Foul underneath again. This might be on Lundstrom. You know, I'll tell you, Ken, Django is cold, but he's got to keep firing. Yeah, I, I think you're right. I think you're exactly right. Sometimes, uh, you know, their their offense is pretty sp spread out in terms of the top three scores. They, they all average about 12, 13 points a game. Talking about... Uh, Talking about wheeling, but you're right. Jingle's got to keep on, keep on pumping them up. Reach and foul. Number three on Jeff Boris. And Pat Doyle talking to the ref. It's, he's obviously disagreed with a lot of the calls here in the, this third quarter, especially towards this middle part here. Boy, it, it took it seems like the third quarter is taking as long as it took to play the whole first half. It's evening out. 40 to 33, Hersey trying to win the MSL North title here at home. Larson shot over the back. Good call. And a uh, sarcastic cheer on the part of the Wheeling fans. Jake Olson, his first. Well, you're right, the Wheeling just won't go away. They're down seven now, and they started out this half down ten. And Hersey really hasn't taken, taken the... Uh, the knockout punch yet. 
And remember that the foul, the three quick fouls by Torres Baskerville that ultimately led to four Percy points in the first half. And uh, that really loomed big. Ooh, a nice follow that time by Boris. The shot wouldn't drop. I think the other key is that Ron's just not in the game right now. He's been out for a while with his four fouls. Vassal on the drive through traffic. I like That's this Vassal. Good. He's a senior, Bo Vassal, and he has been so active when he's been on the court. He's been doing everything. He's playing great defense on top of it. Nine points for Bo, 42-33. Jingo wouldn't drop. Great rebound there by Bo Vassal. Great outlet pass to Matthews. This is what we talk about all night long. Easy two. Good rebound. Good assist. And again, Matthews breaking with as soon as he gets a chance. 44-33, Wheeling with two timeouts left, so Pat Doyle has to be careful. Don't want to get down too far, but at the same time, you want to save your timeouts for the fourth quarter. Litka, Baskerville, that's good. Now, Baskerville had an open shot uh, last time and uh, just bowing in and out. But he's finding that, off at that soft spot right there on the top of the zone. Matthews. Followed by Baskerville. That's his fourth. They are, I will say this, and we know we never really like to comment on officiating, but they are calling it very tightly tonight. They're yes. not letting things, uh, a lot of physical contact that would often go unnoticed uh, or certainly not called is being called here tonight. And that's not really common for the Mid Suburban League. I sort of see the Mid Suburban League as being more of a physical kind of league, especially in interconference play. play. Larson, no. Well, I would say uh, if, if you go by fouls per minute tonight, Ken, the way Torres Baskerville is playing, when the game is over, he will have about 70 fouls. <laughs> That's Baskerville. Now, Jingo, the lob for Lundstrom. Wouldn't drop. Look at those blue shirts right there. Baskerville. Two of the shortest guys in the court, and they're the ones that are there for the rebound. Hersey not uh, being aggressive enough on the boards right now. Certainly letting Wheeling get back in the game. Don Raleigh's off the bench talking to his team. 12 seconds for the quarter. Percy up seven. Matthews had it stolen by Baskerville. Django for three. No good. And a wild ending to the third quarter. The Hersey Huskies trying to put a nail in the coffin lead. Wheeling 44 to 37 in our Tribune Game of the Week. We'll be back. here at Hersey, just underway in the fourth quarter. 44-37, Hersey, this MSL North divisional game. Hersey with a win, wins the MSL North here tonight. That win's not gonna come easy. This winning team is close enough right now within striking distance to win. Larson kicked out to Olsen. In and out, Lundstrom the board. Boy, just forget about the three-pointers. They're just not going down. That's Boris, the senior Boris, tipped out. Good hustle there by Matthews. I tell you, Boris is bringing the ball up, and Doyle came over to him and started talking to him, and Boris was able to keep on dribbling, push the ball to court, and still talk to his coach. It's mm, I, don't, I don't know if he was talking. I think arguing is a better <laughs> I, I, I guess I was trying to, trying to sugarcoat it. He, he didn't seem to agree with what boy Pat Doyle was saying. Baskerville. Just hang it up shot. in those threes. Just don't do, don't do another one. Here's a trap, half-court trap. Matthews, Larson, good pass inside. That was blocked that time by Litka. They call a jump ball. Excellent, excellent play there. I tell you, Hersey recognized the trap coming, and they it's not that first pass out of the trap. It's the second pass out of that double team that's going to find a man open. They found Larson open, and boy, what a job Lundstrom did coming over. Was it Lundstrom or was it uh, on the block? Litka. It was Litka on the block. It's a great job of coming over and helping some support. Litka... That's not his, Larson's not his main responsibility, but he helped out nicely there. Jeff Boris, boy, only two points in the game, but he has really run a good show tonight here for Wheeling. Django, reach in foul. That'll go on Jason Matthews, number four. He didn't like the call. Oh, correction. 
No, that was Matthews. Paul Vassell had his arm up, but that was Matthews who picked it up. Django will inbound. Still a seven point game. That's Payne. He's been cold. A good three point shooter really hasn't gotten on track tonight. And Offensive. Yes, good call. Was. Payne was a little bit out of control there. And that's his fifth foul. Payne will sit down. I think I, I, I miss. Uh, identified him as Eric Payne early in the game, but Eric Payne might be his brother on the sophomore team. Regardless, uh, Mike Payne does sit down. Brown into Larson, tried to thread it, and the Huskies were lucky that time. They'll get it back. There's Dan Larson. Nine points tonight, and uh, really, I think he's been more of an asset for them defensively tonight. The shots he's taken offensively have been uh, down low, pretty makeable shots for him. There's Paul Vassell. Well, he's, he's, been, he's been explosive tonight. He's just laughing and enjoying it. He's laughing right now. 11 for Bo. Litka traveled. Ooh, that was... I think that was a marginal call. Well, I think that a lot of them have been marginal calls tonight. Uh, but they made them. The referees have made a commitment to make these calls. But at this point, both coaches are aware of the fact that uh, any little thing is going to get a whistle tonight. And uh, the refs have at least been consistent in that regard. Nine-point Hersey lead, 46-37, under six minutes for the fourth quarter. Fossil again. Off the glass, no. But look at that hustle right there to follow his own pat, his own shot. Wildcats haven't scored in the fourth quarter yet. Until now, Litka. 46-39. And that'll go on Boris. No, I think it's on Matthews, actually. So one and one for Wheeling is Matthews is going for the inbound pass. Pushed off a little bit. Well, we were both wrong. That was on Jake Olson, his second. Now oh, both teams over the limit. So Jeff Boris, the senior guard, will go to the line to shoot one and one here. I think I was less wrong than you. <laughs> I was off by one number. You're the wrong team. Boy, Wheeling just not, not hitting from the line where they need to tonight. Brown in the front court. Good job to save it. Bustle. Offensive foul? Maybe? No, I think they're, he's going to the line. Boss is going to go to the line. Again, good quick step. He was able to move to his left. Rolitka, number four. Bo Vassell came in in the first quarter when Hersey was losing, came off the bench and really spark plug a little bit of a run. And I don't think Hersey's been, long, uh, been down since then. 65% free throw shooter hits. From his numbers, it doesn't look like he uh, has a, a, a lot of time out here on the floor. Missed the second, and rebound goes to Olsen. Five minutes to play in the fourth, 47-39 Hersey. Olsen for three. No, that'll be wheeling ball if they let it go. Boy, I, one three-point play in the game? One three, that's it. How many attempts? I don't mean to put, put you in spot like that, but this is amazing that uh, I've never seen such, such cold outside shooting. There's a three there. Spoke too soon. <laughs> Five-point game now. Down low to Rancio 
goes back in, turnaround shot is good. That's a tough shot there. And the block against Lundstrom. Ronzio with six in the game. 49-42, seven point game. Ronzio tipped it out. And Litko for the throw in here. Jengo, baseline Litka, his shot on the way, no good. Lundstrom, the board, he'll try it again. Great board, though, by Lundstrom. Great board. Now I have an open shot. Lundstrom's shot is missed. Again, there's Vossel and Olsen blocked and a foul. Good foul. Olsen broke down the middle. Vossel is on the wing, but again, how quickly this Hersey team releases and gets down court. They create a lot of opportunities. Good foul, put him on the line. See the end of it there. Lundstrom with his third. He's, he knew he had, knew he wasn't in foul trouble. And it's a good uh, foul. He, he really almost, he almost had the block there, but got the body as well. Jake Olson, the sophomore, connects. And Percy, 11 of 15 from the free throw line. Tonight. Bo Vossel getting a big hand as he comes to the bench, and we've got a timeout here. Timeout on the floor. The Wildcats spend their third timeout, 50 to 42, in favor of Percy, 346 to play. And if anything, tonight, can it's been the defense of Percy. I don't think Wheeling tonight has run off more than four points in a row. No, they haven't, and uh, I think to a certain extent they're just they're just cold shooting. Obviously, the three-point shooting is not where it should be, and. Uh, they're, they're getting the opportunities, but uh, I think what's killing them is Hersey's fast break. They're just constantly, they're not being able to get back down on, on defense, and uh, that's, that's a big key. Some acrobatics here, and Bert actually is able to do this maneuver. It's I don't think so. <laughs> Pay me to try either. <laughs> well, we got a lot of uh, great basketball action coming up uh, for everyone on the TCI network. Girls sectionals and regionals will be coming up uh, in the next week, and then of course uh, we'll follow them as far as we can through the playoffs. And then once uh, once that starts to subside, then we have got the boys action. So looking forward to that. We want you to stay tuned here on your TCI network. And the girls, I believe, February 25th, the Niles West sectional, which I believe will be at. Jake Olson, the second of two coming here. Here's a press by Hersey after the mate free throw. Wheeling down nine. Three and a half for the fourth quarter. Jengo on the drive in traffic. Again, decision making. He went up in the air, wasn't sure whether he was going to shoot or pass, and didn't accomplish either one. Sophomore Olson. Ronzio, they can wind some clock here. It's something for a sophomore to be on this team. This is a pretty high caliber team with a lot of ex senior experience. Uh, that was a great pass by the sophomore, to and Larson, almost too quick. Under three minutes, 51-42 Hersey. Baskerville, no, over the back foul, that'll go on. Either Jengo or Boris, one of the two. Yeah, he probably could have given it to either one of them. And they, oh wow, that was, Whoa. They, they called hey. that on the sophomore Olsen, and I quite frankly don't know how they could have made that call. Yeah, uh, Hersey Bench jumped up and reacted, and I thought they were reacting to, on, on who on Wheeling was being labeled with the foul, but uh, obviously they had something else to uh, disagree with, and certainly looked like, uh, Litko came over the back, or rather Django came over the back, but uh, well regardless. They, well they got the rebound, so uh, it was almost turnabout as fair play there. Ronzio down to 2.40 to play, 51-42. Nice pass down low to the sophomore, Olsen for two. Well, 
so often uh, one of the skills that's overlooked in the basketball player is the ability to move without a basketball. And Olsen did a nice job there moving along the baseline, popping open. Out of bounds to Wheeling. And it is defense that will enable Hersey to walk away with a win here tonight. The Wildcats haven't shot well from the field, but they really haven't had time to line up their shots. Jingo, Baskerville, that's good. Torres Baskerville with six in the game. We'll get a fast break. Creates opportunities. Patience there by Larson. Brown for three. That was that was critical. 12 point Hersey lead. Jingo, Boris, now Lundstrom. Pat Doyle, Pat Doyle talked about the uh, the decision making on the part of his team whether to shoot or to pass. Letka for three, in and out. Larson the rebound. A minute and a half for the game. Olsen, long range. Boris. Good move by Boris, excellent move. He's Jason really, he, he's done a great job tonight. Uh, we've talked about him, he doesn't have any points or uh, only two points, but, but what a job in terms of quarterback in this team and uh, really handling the ball effectively against a fair amount of pressure. Jeff Boris will go to the line to shoot twice here. 56-44, they need 12 points in a minute and a half. Next to impossible the way Hersey has defended them tonight. Well, Matthews has fouled out. Matthews played a great game. He's been one of the guys out on that fast break. Senior Boris with two points in the game. And the seniors start thinking about after tonight, they've got one game left, one league game left. So the seniors start thinking about the fact that it'll be their last high school game. Boris hit them both. 56-46. Be seeing a lot of this next a minute and 20 he'll probably take 10 minutes and 20 seconds to play uh, I, I tell you this winning team's <laughs> had a lot of minutes out here they've done a lot of running eh? it's been a lot of substitutions for Pat Doyle's team Mike Brown the senior excellent free throw shooter like I said excellent free throw <laughs> shooter. you had to do that good save though for the three-point plays, but again, just they have not been there all night for either team, really. And Hersey running the fast break just very well here. Bronzio, Olsen, 50 seconds, and a foul. Oh, that's who you want to foul. I would say he put a sophomore on the line. He made his free throws earlier, but if you're playing percentages, that's the guy you want to see on the line. 56-46. Not impossible, but highly unlikely here. Jake Olson, a six-foot sophomore. Well, you just get the sense, too, that uh, Hersey's defense has the ability to uh, to really choke the, the life out of its victim, and uh, they've got Wheeling down. And, uh, you know, once, uh, once uh, Wheeling hit that three and they pulled it within a, a five-point lead, uh, they weren't able to turn the corner at that point and really step it up, which is what they needed to do. Hersey just kept playing solid defense, and capitalizing on the fast breaks and the opportunities that they had. And they pulled in front here, so we're going to have a timeout. That's their last timeout. 58-46 with 54 seconds left in the game. Now Hersey will go to 17-6 and six overall, 8-1 and one in the MSL North. They will win the MSL North tonight. Wheeling will go to 9-14 and 2-8. and, two and eight.
And you can look at number 40, our player of the game, Bo Vossel. And uh, if you've been watching the game, you probably noticed that Bo has had some points, but he's been extremely active on both ends of the court. 12 points tonight, but uh, several rebounds and uh, a lot of screens and a lot of hustle, a lot of fast breaks, a lot of assists. Uh, playing with a lot of enthusiasm. Uh, yeah, one basket was just uh, smiling all the way back down the court. Really looked like he was enjoying the game. He's a senior. Well, don't forget that the regionals will be coming up soon, both boys and girls. The boys regionals begin on the 2nd of March. You've got the sectionals a week after that, the super sectionals on March 17th. So this is when things really heat up in the state of Illinois. March Madness is what they call it. Mercy team can really turn it up when they want to. Coach Don Rowley doesn't think that there's a better defensive team in the area. He may be right. They haven't really been challenged here tonight. He's made a lot of mistakes, uh, unforced errors and whatnot, but as we get into playoff time, I think this Hershey team is primed and ready to go. Rengo with the foul, and they really haven't shot the lights out here tonight. I think Wheeling has played them played pretty tough defensively, but they showed that uh, if, if you can play tough defensively, you can win games. What's surprising, it's been uh, a certain sort of ambiguity here. I mean, there's a... Uh, it's been, a, for the most part, a fast-paced game, but also a pretty strong defensive battle. Neither team getting a lot of uh, easy shots other than really Hersey with their fast break, but uh, sort of both things going on at once there. But uh, Hersey definitely a very strong, strong defensive team. And Willie's, Willie's done well here tonight, too. They just weren't able to capitalize when they needed to. Stores hit them both. Hersey 13 of 17 from the free throw line tonight. Down to 15 seconds to play. Ringo for two. Strong move by Ringo, and they're going to call a timeout. Oh, Jengo, two, four, six. 11 points for Nick Jengo tonight. And Wheeling. Oh, I thought they spent their last timeout to go, but apparently they didn't. Well, this is their last time out. That's been confirmed. Probably won't have a chance to call another one. 13 seconds after the fans here know the meaning of tonight's win. It's the MSL North title. Schools had a lot of success here in athletics the past couple of years. Their basketball team has uh, been to the finals for the Sweet 16. Of course, their football team won the state championship not too many years ago. Always an enthusiastic crowd here. And they're not camera shy. No, they're not. They're not camera shy. want to thank uh, Guy Venna and the staff here at Hersey High School. Always uh, very accommodating to us. We love coming here. We'll hear the crowd count it down here. Big night for Hersey. We talked about it. This was the, the night that they wanted to clinch. I think it helps. I think it's important to these guys, especially the seniors, that they clinch at home. You never know what happens in the playoffs. You go on the road, and you can lose one game, and it's all over. And uh, you know this game is important for them. And uh, here comes the rest of the bench. And they have uh, massive substitutions. Four guys coming in, and the crowd responds to the substitutions. The starters giving a great hand here at Hershey High School. Grant Johnson, a 5'9 senior, will be shooting one and one here. That's all starting to get seen some of his substitutions as well. Litka will sit down. Brian Heck will check in. Grant Johnson, that's not easy to do to sit on the bench for three and a half quarters and hit a free throw. Sixty-one forty-eight. Sixty-two. Hersey team very happy at this point. They uh, 
planet taking it one game at a time, but that also means uh, enjoying and savoring the victories. Nine seconds. Fair amount of height on the uh, Wheeling roster. Unfortunately, not a lot of uh, those players are, are in the starting lineup for Coach Pat Doyle. And he's going to lose a lot of his guys this year. A lot of his men are seniors. I'll Most importantly, Jeff Boris, I think, in terms of being their quarterback. But uh, Nick Anga, a senior. Keith Lundstrom, a senior. And Joe Litka, senior. So uh, a lot of rebuilding, and uh, these guys that are on the court right now for Wheeling, they're going to have to come in next year and perform. One second at the buzzer. That will do it. And the Hersey Huskies have won the MSL North by defeating Wheeling 62 to 50. And look at the scene at midcourt. McCarthy, and they will cut the net here to celebrate Hersey winning the MSL North 62 to 50. Ken McCarthy, <laughs> and uh, unofficially, <laughs> I'm sorry, but Guy Bennett just walked by. They're ready to cut down the, the net. <laughs> Guy Bennett just walked by saying, Who's got the scissors? <laughs> no, unofficially, the scoring tonight really a balanced scoring attack. Uh, Bo Vassal led him with 12, and anytime somebody leads your team in scoring with 12, you know you had. Pretty balanced scoring. Jason Matthews with 10, Dan Larson 9. The sophomore, Jake Olson with 9, Mike Brown had 8, the two high scores. For Wheeling, Joe Litka had 17 to lead everybody in the game. Nick Jengo had 11. And this is something his players will always remember cutting down the net. Eric Ronzio. Got to thank Guy Vetta for running down and grabbing the scissors. So we congratulate the Hersey Huskies. Mike Brown. And I'm sure Dan Larson will get a nice round of, he could rip the net down, I think, yeah. if he wants to. <laughs> Matthews with a great game himself and uh, doing a lot on that fast break and uh, I think, is it just the seniors that are going to cut this down? Here comes Larson. They need to get sharper scissors. Um, in my neck of the woods, Ken, we would have used an electric scissors. <laughs> <laughs> Only the seniors. Grant Johnson. Something for the uh, something for the underclassmen to look forward to, but a lot of fun. The crowd really gets into it here at Hersey. Again, we talked about the program, great athletics, and they uh, they do a great job here, and they really enjoy it. So that will wrap things up here at Hersey High School. Congratulations to Don Raleigh and his staff, to the Huskies, 62 to 50. They defeat the Wheeling Wildcats. Our thanks to our statistician tonight, Bob Schutzler, our director, Randy Reese, and the rest of our TCI crew. For Ken McCarthy, I'm Burke Groner saying good night from Hersey High School. And good luck, Randy.
Dewan and a foul. Let's go back to Scotty Pippen on that long set of pass as Magic returns. It's just a matter of eye contact, seeing the floor, and then having someone at the end like a Scotty Pippen that can go up, catch, and convert. Drexler out as Magic Johnson returns. Coach Don Nelson said he might play him at four different positions today. Reggie Lewis, number 35 from the Boston Celtics. His first all-star appearance. Pippen goes out. Mark Price with his second free toss. He makes them both. He's best in the league from the line, and it's a 10-point lead for the West. Imagine shooting over 95% from the free throw line. Elijah Wan's first shot is a little short. Rodman, who leads the league in rebounds, has his first today, and Dumars, his teammate with the Pistons, out to Rodman. So we have three Pistons on the floor. The only team with three in the game. Reggie Lewis. Malone, another board. Magic sets up Hornacek. Johnson rebounds to Elijah on handcuffed him. Hardaway for three. Rodman another rebound. He's averaging over 18 a game. Reggie Lewis just did not have the angle that time to find Dennis Rodman. I think a little bit surprised when he realized that Rodman had gotten the rebound, kicked it to him, and was filling the lane. That's how quick Dennis Rodman is. Otis Thorpe of the Rockets makes his first appearance for Carl Malone. Let's go to Ahmad. Yeah, I have to. I have to pick him up first because he's <laughs> Magic Johnson credited with the tip. That's what Magic playing. Everybody's a little pumped up, especially at West team. And I think that we got the well of the storm early. But you know he's going to be into the game and the crowd's pulling for the West, so we got to keep him coming down a little bit. And seeing that you were MVP last year, you haven't yet got warmed up, have you? Uh, I'm cruising this year. <laughs> I've got one MVP. I don't have to kill myself anymore. <laughs> All right. Back to you, Dick. Barkley, who had an ankle injury, remember, last year and said he didn't want to play. The NBA office convinced him he should, and he collected 17 points and 22 rebounds and the MVP award. And then the uh, commissioner thanked him for deciding to show up. <laughs> <laughs> Sir Charles. They're going to have some etiquette uh, lessons, are they not, before they go to Barcelona? Well, I'm sure there'll be a number of seminars by the Olympic Committee uh, making our players aware of the fact certain customs by other countries and uh, how we would like to be represented. Jeff Hornacek from downtown hits the tray, his first points. And the West in the final seconds of this first quarter have a 13-point lead. Price around Hardaway. Stolen by Magic. Hornacek. Magic says, we'll take the last shot. Fans are saying, shoot. Hornacek, 14 seconds of shot clock and game clock almost identical. Lajuan with five, four. Rebound Doherty with one. Not in time. Dumars did not get it off in time. And that ends a high scoring as expected first quarter with the West dominating 44 31. And Magic leading the way four for five and 10 points for the West. see the inside of an Olympic stadium or know how it feels to be the best in the world. But all children have the ability to discover what is best within themselves. That's why Coca-Cola supports athletic programs for young people in 154 countries around the world. To support the Olympic spirit within us all. Can't beat the real thing. Five hundred dollars, baby, and you can pick my teammate. Give them the chump. You mean play basketball? It's not about black. Oh, it is hard work being this good. It's not about white. How much money did you make today? I missed you too. It's about green. Woo! 
Wesley Snipes, Woody Harrelson. I only have four words for you. White men can't jump. Can you explain to this Gladys Knight and the pimps? It's pimps! The pimps! Rated R. Starts Friday, March 27th at theaters everywhere. I have this fantasy where Steve takes me to this very romantic place for a candlelight dinner in his Nissan Pathfinder. We sit at a table for two that has this really nice view. constant change, there is one certainty. The financial strength of the rock. The prudential. Rock solid. Welcome back for the second quarter at the Orlando Arena. Some of the more than 900 members of the press corps Hi. making their notes. And there, oh, there's Bob Lanier, who is doing the call on NBA radio. And uh, with him is uh, Marv Albert. It's good to see them give this guy a shot uh, along with Lanier. Maybe maybe he'll make it someday. And looks to me like he might be the only person I know that wears makeup for radio. Marv and Mike will be together next uh, Sunday. It's first half of our doubleheader. Let's see it. Detroit and Philadelphia, I believe. That's it. with some work to uh, be done, trailing 44-31. Last year's first quarter score was 23-22. So 29 more points today. So the influence of Isaiah Magic uh, has been felt. Price with Hornacek. Good give and go, and Rodman scores. Timing execution that time. Rodman set the screen and slipped it. Just as the defensive player tried to go over the top, he was gone. Price delivered on time. First point for Dennis Rodman all alone at the other end is Otis Thorpe, his first points. Akeem Olajuwon looking for a teammate. Otis Thorpe, they've done that a few times during the regular season. Joe Dumars for two. Joe first points of the game uh, everyone getting in the book now magic working on uh, Re reggie lewis and he is fouled first on lewis <laughs> just a moment back. ago at the eastern end of the floor sometimes you hold the screen a long time here rodman slips it quick and there's the opening you only have a second to deliver and then you have to finish with a guy like elijah on flying at you magic johnson wearing his age on his uniform a young 32. Didn't get the supreme uh, farewell tour that Dr. J and Kareem did uh, more for the fans and themselves. I know it became tiring for, for the player. Magic, in many ways, is uh, bundling all that up into one afternoon today in Orlando and then in Barcelona next summer. Price for three. Rodman, an offensive rebound. Kept it alive for Doherty. Rodman can't hit. Still alive for Lewis. Reggie. You have a couple of live bodies on the glass for the East. Reggie Lewis, Dennis Rodman. And Tim Hardaway, the little guy from Utah. Hardaway. And the Golden State Warriors. He's got some terrific numbers, Hardaway. When you compare what he's done his first couple, three years with that of Magic Johnson, it's really impressive. Brad Doherty from Black Mountain, North Carolina. Doherty, number 43, has his fourth points. Hardaway hits again. 53-39, the West. Seven for Hardaway. Lewis to Doherty. Over Elijah Wan. Scoring fest in Orlando. Even though it's an all-star game, you're seeing some outstanding basketball being played. Magic Johnson. Well, he is really sharp for someone who hasn't played at the competitive level. He's worked out considerably, but he's a razor game sharp. I don't think Magic has ever tried to fool himself. He understands what shape he's in. 
change it, Nick. Rodman with one of his specialties, the offensive rebound. He now has four. West by a dozen. Hardaway almost threw that one in as he was fouled by Mark Price. And we have an official's timeout. 9.20 left in the first half. And here's Irvin Johnson. Some of the magic that we've watched since 79 at Michigan State. the road like the new prelude from Honda. Hi, welcome to McDonald's. What do you want with your fries? The one-of-a-kind taste of McDonald's Big Mac or the big beefy quarter pounder with cheese. Either way, in the McDonald's Extra Value Meal, you always get an order of world-famous fries and a Coke Classic. But you gotta pick the burger. Dominic, the lane was yours. How'd you get inside? Hey, what can I say? Dominic, what do you want with your fries? Hey, now there's a question. What you want is what you get. The Extra Value Meal. At McDonald's today. What do you want with your fries? Where do you want to be in 10 years? Detroit to Minneapolis, Minneapolis to Detroit. That's not why I became a pilot. I'll tell you the run I want. St. Thomas to Saber Island. My own Grumman Mallard. Call it Dave's Airways. That's what I want for my investments. Now, how do we do it? You can get there from here. With Shearson Lehman Brothers. The NBA All-Star Game is brought to you by Honda, maker of fine quality automobiles. Test drive a Honda at your local dealer today. By the people at Nike, who encourage you to just do it. And by McDonald's. What you want is what you get at McDonald's today. City of Orlando, Florida, and Michael Jordan, who's a dream beyond all the success is just this to join the PGA Tour I, maybe you could analyze this swing for us Mike oh, oh the last oh. person you ever <laughs> want to ask about a golf swing and, and me and Michael has played 36 holes every day down here and probably if there's enough light left he'd go out and try to get nine in after this game today six points and well rested in the first period 17 of the 25 All-Stars have scored it is 55-43 the West leading by 12 Let's uh, reintroduce the men on the floor as uh, James Worthy makes his first appearance for the West, the Los Angeles Lakers star. It's uh, Elijah Wan, Magic Worthy, Hardaway Shooting, and uh, Hornacek. And for the East and White, Rodman, Lewis, Dumars, Doherty. And Kevin Willison, the Atlanta Hawks, for the first time. One of the problems with that last shot for the East was you had the number one and number two rebounders in the league. Rodman and Willis going after it. They wound up bumping into each other, knocking out of bounds. Magic, that little bumping action technique of his. And he'll play a little two-man game with James Worthy. No, nope, he'll say, I'll play it alone with a hooker. What you have right now is Magic moving into the power forward position, the big forward spot. Worthy playing the three spot, Hardaway one, Hornacek two. Magic leads all scorers with 16. Don't hold now, don't hold. Kevin Willis, his first shot, Elijah Wan rebounds, clears to Hardaway. Magic dishes off to Worthy, his first attempt. Rodman. by Elijah Wan. Now sliding up into the four position just creates a different problem for Dennis Rodman, one of the league's best defenders. Rodman against Magic. Magic shows him the hook. That's a long distance throw. John Stockton, the leading assist man in the NBA again this year from the Utah Jazz, makes his first appearance, and so does Dan Marley, the outstanding number six man of the Phoenix Suns. Magic Johnson goes out. Stop. 
Stockton picks up the loose ball. Off to his teammate, Jeff Hornacek. It was a walk on at Iowa State. And now an NBA All-Star. So the West dominating here in the first half. Five on the shot clock. Three, Lewis. Nice patience that time by the Eastern team. Passing the ball around, a little ball movement. Eventually got a wide open shot. Worthy at the other end over Willis. Willis rebounds. And off the top of the head of Rodman to the west. Steve Jones is with us. All right, I'm over here with the heavy breathing Magic Johnson, but you wanted to have pace at the start of this game. Did you get it? Oh, yeah, we got good. I got good pace as an individual with the team, too, as well. Uh, I just wanted to get up and run down the court. You know, after all that's been going on this weekend, you just wanted to now get in the game. So everything went well. I finally got a hoop to go down and then just start rolling from there. Hey, we got several hoops to go in, and everyone wants to know, is there any effect so far on you physically? Do you feel any difference other than not being in game shape? No, you, you don't have to worry about that. Everything's all right. In game shape, I can, <laughs> I'm dying out there. <laughs> you know, but uh, I'm having a lot of fun, and uh, that's the key right there. I'm back with the fellas, and uh, it's great. All right, back to you, Dick. All right, Snapper. Snapper will be with us uh, next Sunday as you see Kevin Willis tack one in. He'll be in Los Angeles at the Forum when Magic Johnson's number 32 will be retired. The Celtics will be in town against the Lakers. That's part of the doubleheader on NBC next Sunday. Worthy. A finger roll out there and the foul to Willis. And a timeout by the Eastern All-Stars. The West leads by a dozen. 6.29 remaining in the first half. It's it, and that's that. It's it, and that's that. It's it, and that's that. Nothing beats it. You want the bar across the street. <laughs> Like the great beer that's left filling. It's everything you want a beer to be. It has a dual overhead camshaft design. Four valves per cylinder. And a responsive double wishbone suspension. The Acura Integra. An idea that began with a Formula One race car and has been evolving ever since. All right, let's review last night's assignment. The proper usage of the word to. Mr. Mullen. Two dogs ain't my homework. See me at the class. Mr. Hill, the proper usage of the word to. Too many students don't listen to the teacher. Anybody else have an answer? Keisha. If you're too legit to quit, stay in school. Pop. Man, I wish I said that. As we mentioned, the Stars are out in Orlando to watch the Stars. There's two from the NFL. Ronnie Lush, he played one year on the USC basketball team. And Warren Moon on his right, the great quarterback of the Houston Oilers. Boomer Esiason from the Bengals. He was an outstanding baseball pitcher. Don't know much about his uh, hoops biography. Dwight Gooden. Oh, I bet he could throw the baseball pass. He could get it down court. And the all-time scorer in NBA history and good close friend of Magic Johnson, Kareem Jabbar. And the elegant Dr. J, Julia Serving. Six twenty-nine left in the first half. The West 61, the East 49, and James Worthy at the line has not scored as yet. Worthy in his seventh consecutive All-Star game. This might be the player that has missed Magic Johnson the most during the regular season. Field goal percentage way down. Uh, those easy scores that always came from those long Magic passes, not there this year. MVP of the 88 NBA Finals has his first point. 
Jordan finally back in the game. He uh, was rested almost a full quarter. He comes out shooting. That really made a big difference in resting the whole quarter. Eight points for Jordan. John Stockton, Hornacek, Elijah on. Stockton against Adams and back outside with 10 on the shot clock, Hornacek. Dan Marley's first shot. Rodman, another rebound. Adams knocked away by Marley and right back to little Michael, the shortest man on the court at 5'10". If that's all, has his fourth point. And the East pulls within nine. Elijah on around Willis and the big guy from Houston has his fourth. And that's a move that Kevin Willis has picked up, put into his repertoire, using it for the first time this season on a regular basis. Akeem said, remember, I'm the guy that showed it to you first. Adams doesn't get the three. Rebound worthy. Here's Stockton on the run. His first shot is short. Worthy trying to save out of bounds to the East. Let's go to Ahmad Rashad. All right, Dick. Isaiah, just like old times, Magic comes in the game, you take him to the hole. You go back on the other end, he takes you right back to the hole. Well, it's the fans' game. We tried to get the fans involved right away, and then I wanted to show him that I still had it, and then I think he wanted to show me that he still had it. <laughs> All right, man, good luck to you. Hey, Ahmad working on his Satchmo Armstrong voice. The Kimbe Matumbo of the Denver Nuggets in the ball game. As Stockton around Adams. Knocked away, and Rodman comes up with it. And Don Rodman Nelson wants goal ten. His net ball is on the rim. Rodman has ten rebounds in this first half. Adams, who made the team when Larry Bird century denied him the chance to be here as a starter. With two seconds, Rodman. And there's the 24-second buzzer. Dennis not used to being that wide open facing the basket. Down at the other end, Don Nelson was complaining about this. In international competition, when it hits the rim, you can go up and take it off. But here, you can't do it. In the Olympic Games this summer, that all will go. Worthy against Rodman. Well done. Three points for Magic Johnson's teammate of the Lakers. Four minutes to go in the half. The West by 13. Dumars. No one there except Hornacek of the West. Matumbo! Hornacek saw him coming down the floor, I'll never know, because he was a good eight yards behind him in transition, yet he knew that there was somebody in a blue shirt there. He found him. And here comes a young man from Georgetown and Zaire. You talk about trailers, this is the ultimate trailer. About two seconds behind, but finishes. Well, Tumbo came to Georgetown, couldn't speak English, learned English through French, one of five languages he speaks. When he came off the plane, John Thompson was there to greet him. Thompson didn't believe he was 7 2 at the Kemby told us, but Coach Thompson saw me. He didn't bother to go anywhere near any bookstore. He said he got me a pair of tennis shoes. He said, I just want to see how you handle the basketball. Well, John, being as smart as he is, he actually did is he sent a scout and said, Look, if this guy's really small, don't bring him around the gym or our offices, but if he's legit, bring him right over. That is Dikembe Mutombo's full name. He said he wants to see his name in lights. Boy, it's going to take a lot of neon. Uh, you go ahead and take it. <laughs> Three and a half to go. 68-53, the West leads. Kevin Willis, the jump hook. Marley has Mutombo to, uh, Mutombo to deal with and then throws it away. He's small. Come on. Hey, Dick, you know, I was just listening on that last huddle, and this is one of the few huddles you will ever sneak in and listen to in the NBA that nobody's listening. <laughs> Anybody talking? Jordan stolen by Worthy, his former North Carolina teammate. There are a couple players in the league that you really fear throwing the ball back to the top of the circle if they're playing defense. One is Barkley, the other is James Worthy. Little Michael Adams, Isaiah, 
Adams with the big trees and turns it over. Another run for the West. They've scored the last eight points. Throw it backwards. James will be there with those long arms. And then who's going to catch him? 17-point lead for the West. Hey, the rabbit can be sleep around here. What's all the racket? Hey, what's up? I was only kidding. Gruesome, ain't it? <laughs> of course you know, this means war. Here, Jordan. And here, Jordan. Who'd you expect? Elmer Fudd? Nice shot. Nice shot. This flaws them every time. <laughs> This could be the beginning of a beautiful friendship. That's all, folks. Well, that's my line. You could hitch a ride on a comet. You could body surf a landslide. You could hang glide from an eagle. You could book a flight on a lightning bolt. Or you could drive the 1992 Toyota 4x4. If you think the All-Stars in today's game are awesome, check this out. Twelve centerfold right here in my living room. If you want to see more, you're going to have to watch Blossom tomorrow night right here on NBC. I hope I don't make a fool of myself when I meet him. Hi. Blossom, after the Fresh Prince, NBC Monday. The NBA All-Star Game is brought to you by Toyota and their quality line of 1992 cars and trucks. Toyota, I love what you do for me. We're back in Orlando, and Magic Johnson leads all scorers with 16. 30 years ago in St. Louis, Philadelphia's Wilt Chamberlain established the all-star scoring record with 42 points. Number 13, Chamberlain dominated the game, 42 points, 24 rebounds, but it was the West, led by Elgin Baylor and Bob Pettit, that won the game 150-130. Wilt with 23 points in a half, which is a record tied by Tom Chambers, and Magic has a shot at that. Here comes the West. Their biggest lead, 70 to 53. Stockton for three. John Stockton from Gonzaga, Spokane, Washington. They'll be cheering him up there at uh, the Jack and Dan's, his dad's uh, bar, where the fans watch his action with the Utah Jazz. West shooting 64%. Thomas can't hit. Rebound, Hornacek. Last touch by the East. 2.14 left in the half, and the West by 20. The only All-Stars yet to score, Charles Barkley and Dan Marley. Hornacek from the corner. Or the West, did they come out with a hot hand? Well, they go back to practice yesterday where they went after it. They were very aggressive. They had an almost what we call full-type practice and uh, showing up here in the first half. 65% shooting for the West. Michael Jordan over Marley. And Thomas... Basket interference. Offensive interference. West ball. Charles Barkley returns for the East. Kevin Willis out. I'm sure that for Don Nelson, this is a little bit unusual to see a team on the floor, the opposition smaller than his team. Right now, Paul Jackson's saying we're going quick. Worthy got around Barkley, could not connect. Here comes Sir Charles the other way. The 76ers star. The lead stopped him. Goes around Hornacek. And it's finally picked off by Matumbo. Boy, Stockton, his quickness beat Michael Jordan. 77 53. Watch, watch him. Barkley in the crowd. Marley 
for the West. 15 unanswered points by the West. Make that. Well, Michael Adams, the shortest against the tallest, took it away from Matumbo. Hornacek left alone. All West in the first half, and we're in the final minute. Michael Jordan with Stockton. Eight on the shot clock. Adams is shy. Hornacek to Matembo. Barkley with a rebound with 23 seconds left to go. The West with no idea in mind of pulling it out and eating some clock up. Let's score. Isaiah Thomas. And with just under six seconds left, the East finally gets a goal. Time for Marley. And he's off the rim at the end of the first half. The West led not only by the play of Magic Johnson, but obviously emotionally spurred by Magic's perhaps final ever NBA game. And they have dominated 79-55. Magic Johnson will play in Barcelona, he says. U.S. Olympic team. But there's much more to cover about our Olympians in the games in Spain next summer. And that will be the topic of our halftime report. Stay with us. It's all West and Magic, the first half in Orlando. You can't have Isaiah's moves. You can't have his speed. Speed, speed, speed. You can't have his style. 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 You definitely can't have his mom. But, but you can have his car. His car. 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 The 1992 Toyota Celica. This Valentine's Day. Make sure you send your sweetheart the FTD Flower Basket Bouquet. Oh, and make sure you send it a day or two early, because as Cupid says, if your sweetheart misses out... It's as easy as FTD. Tuesday, the police face their toughest personal crisis when an act of violence takes the life of someone they all love. An all-new heat, then. It's the incredible story of a child killer who was only a child himself. It wasn't supposed to go off. He knew that gun was going to fire. I'm not going to plead this down to slap on the wrist. An all-new Law and & Order. And on its new night, the case against Cobb intensifies. I'm about to be charged with murder. And the DA forces Tess to choose between her job and her friend. Reasonable doubts. An all-new NBC Tuesday starts at 8, 7 central. Tonight, get ready for NBC's All-Stars of Comedy. First, John Ritter was looking for an angel and found hell on Earth. We've adopted Satan. Now he's stuck with a problem child. Then... The six-year-olds, how much trouble can they be? Arnold Schwarzenegger's a cop in a class by himself. Not on HBO, not on Showtime, only on NBC. I might have a headache. It might be a tumor. It's not a tumor. Kindergarten Cop at 8.30, 7.30 Central, following Problem Child at 7. NBC's All-Stars of Comedy tonight. This is the Prudential Halftime Report, brought to you by Prudential. Come to the companies of the Prudential and build your future on the rock. Halftime at the Orlando Arena, the Western Conference All-Stars leading the East by the score of 79 to 55. Bob passes back along with Quinn Buckner. It's an exhibition game. It's meant to be entertainment and a showcase for the stars, so the outcome doesn't matter that much. But what people will be talking about is Magic, who is the high man of the game with 16 points, doesn't have any assists. He's played 11 minutes in the first half. Well, I think what you and I talked about earlier, you make the point. For Magic, it's important that he plays well, just, just for himself, but he has shown that he's able to score. And I liked him because he got down on the block, got in position to make some things happen, and I thought he did that. Now, though he doesn't have an assist, it doesn't mean he hadn't passed the ball to 
particularly well. It just means that he's done the things he had to do. For example, he gets a chance to get up, down on the block and play offense. He's going against the best defensive player at the forward spot in the league at Dennis Rodman. Now watch his patience. He takes his hook shot and takes it right at him, and there's no question about it. With the second of two hook shots he's made, the 16 points I would expect it. I expect the West to win. I think there's a good chance Magic might be the man today. He's played small forward against Reggie Lewis and Dennis Rodman and point guard against Isaiah. Well, that's what Nelly Don Nelson said he wanted to do with him. Let him play all the positions for a guy that's been away from the game as long as he has competitively. I saw the fire there, even though I saw him take it easy early, which he should have done. The second quarter he came out, there was no question what he had in mind. He wanted to prove, I'm here to play, I can play with these guys, and I thought he showed that. Remember something about Magic Johnson. There has always been, and I mean this in the best sense, a theatrical aspect to his personality. He is a showman. A showman needs the stage, and a showman needs a final bow. One of the original Showtime members, if you will, that is Magic. He likes the time to get on stage, show people that he can do what everyone else thinks he's unable to do. And I thought that's what he did this afternoon in the first half. Now, I think the barometer for him has is, is, is gone pretty well. I think he knows he can play good minutes. He played 10, 11 minutes. Does that again in the second half. That, that's probably going to be the scenario in the uh, Olympics as well for him. All right, now coming up next, we've got to look at how things are shaping up for the U.S. Olympic basketball team as we continue on the Prudential Halftime Report. constant change, there is one certainty, the financial strength of the rock, the prudential rock solid. They're just a bunch of tall guys running around if you don't have a program. Don't worry if you can't get to Orlando. The official 1992 All-Star program is here. Capture all the moments and relive the history with action-packed photos and great articles. To order, send $10 to Post Office Box 1750, Grand Central Station, New York, New York, 10163. Send for your official NBA All-Star program today. Still five and a half months until the Summer Olympics begin in Barcelona. And for the first time, NBA players, of course, will compete. So far, ten players have been selected to play, and all of them, with the exception of Larry Bird, are here today in Orlando. What lies ahead for this elite group and their coach, Chuck Daly? Well, here's an update. In the past, they'd come together only once a year. The marquee names of the NBA gathered at the All-Star break. But this June, they'll assemble once again, 12 players strong, known simply as... For now, 10 of the 12 have been named. The final two, at least one of whom will be a collegiate player, will be named in April. Shaquille O'Neal of LSU is one of the players under consideration, along with Duke's Christian Leitner. I think the committee has the prerogative to go either way, either one or two. Uh, my charge to them as the president was to encourage them to consider two. I'm thinking about Coach Daly, and it's very difficult to play more than eight or possibly even nine guys. And so to have 11 NBA players giving up their time is going to be a very difficult thing for him. I think he's better off with 10 NBA guys and two college guys. The champagne from the NBA Finals will hardly be wiped away before the Dream Team begins preparations for the Tournament of the Americas to be held in Portland, Oregon. Ten teams from North, South, and Central America will battle for four spots in the Olympics. I think we're on the same page. It's attack. Make them play us. 